evening and welcome to the Community Recreation Commission meeting for Thursday, June 28th. We have a full forum tonight. I'll call the meeting to order at 6.07. If you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. All righty, thank you tonight. Jim, before we move on, you want to uh, have a moment of silence here for the victims today in the mass shooting. Very uh, sad about that. If you're all just catching up, there was uh, at the newspaper, uh, newspaper company in Annapolis, Maryland. So a moment of silence, please. Okay, with that being said, I need an approval for to uh, approve the agenda as submitted for tonight's meeting. A motion out there? A motion. Yeah. Second? Greg, um, any discussion on this? Who was second that, Greg or Rich? Greg did. All in favor, aye, opposed. All right. So Wendy had took the time to get those minutes to us that was with the agenda when it was mailed out. I need a motion to approve the minutes from the May 24th meeting, please. Anybody put a motion out there? Oh. Rich got that. Second? Second. Okay, Kyle, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Right. All right. Public comment. Danielle, come on up and introduce yourself and tell us who you are. Yes. Hi, I'm Danielle West, and I'm working with the rec department this year to begin our first year of the Groziel Youth Summer Day Camp Program. Um, it is a great idea and use of the Centennial Farm facilities and Water Edge facilities. Um, we are helping kids and families enjoy their summer. Uh, we have anywhere between 15 to 20 kids on a regular basis. Uh, it doesn't have to be the entire summer. Some families are signed up for the whole summer and some are just signed up on a you know week, weekly basis. They may come the first week, they may come the last week, that kind of thing. So it's very flexible for parents and for families. Um, there's a three-day program. Some kids come three days and there's a five-day program. Some kids come every day and that's a nice option for our working families. We also are offering before and after care um, if parents need that, that additional time. Uh, so we have two great counselors that are there full time with me. Uh, they are 18 and up uh, college students and uh, they're doing a great job working with the kids on the activities that I've designed for them to go through the day with. Uh, we start our day usually with just some play time as everybody's kind of coming in, checking in. Legos are by far the biggest hit. Um, and then we, we come together and we really meet and we try to establish a nice culture for the day. We um, update any new campers on what our expectations are and how we're going to treat each other and the kind of fun we're going to have. And we pull songs that kids know from other camp experiences or school experiences. Just have a little fun. We really let the kids lead those kinds of things. Um, we spend the majority of our morning uh, rotating through outdoor games and activities. Uh, our counselors have been trained to know a variety of games for kids to play. We divide them up into groups or gender depending on, on how many there are of each. And uh, we'll stop somewhere in the middle, take a snack break and a little drink break and things like that and then head back outside for the rest of the morning. Um, we do arts and crafts throughout the morning too. Uh, yesterday we did some tie dye and the day before we did some tie dye too. So, you know, <laughs> it's fun times. My hands are a little bit dyed still. Um, and then after, after lunch, we spend time doing some science activities um, related to themes. Uh, I forgot to mention that we do have a theme every week, like this week's theme was color. So we took some flowers, we cut, we cut them at different locations at the stem we put them into some dyed water to kind of see how long it would take for that dye to reach the petals just very relaxed but cool learning experiences for the kids um, and then we'll go back outside and do more stuff 
Uh, the playground there has been a great tool for us too. Um, the kids are having a great time there. And it's awesome because the 12 year olds are engaging with the six year olds and you know doing all sorts of really nice caretaking things for the younger campers. And then one day a week we are traveling or I guess we are not traveling because we're not transporting, but parents are dropping their children off at the Water's Edge location and we're using all the sports stuff that there is there. We're doing, <coughs> well, you know, kid versions of things like volleyball and basketball and things like that, um, really utilizing the property there and then swimming in the afternoon. Uh, we have been through the licensing process with the state of Michigan. Uh, we just found out that we're approved and we'll get that official stamp tomorrow. And we have our first visit uh, from the state on the 17th. So they'll be coming to Centennial Farm to make sure that we've got all of our rules and regulations down. Um, anybody have any questions? I do. Sure. Oh, great. <laughs> what is the age range of the campers? Um, right now our, on our list, we have six to 12. Uh, any thoughts to younger campers? That's up to Kim. I'm gonna I'm gonna defer oh, that one to her. Yeah, yeah, I know my place. Um, I've thought about it. I can't make I can't answer that tonight. I want to get through the first year, you know, with um, seeing how things go and so forth. But I I definitely see the future as this program gr gr grows, field trips, those types of things, younger children, probably four years old and up. Um, so I do see that down the road. But year one. Not this summer. Is that a fair answer? Okay. And I just want to further that comment. As more kids join the program, the more specific we can do, we can be in our programming. So right now with 15, if you have like, let's say 12 kids, what you design kind of has to be something that everybody in that range can enjoy. But if you have, let's say 30 kids, so you have a huge chunk of 10, 11, and 12 year olds, your programming is gonna change to fit you know, a different a, a chunk of 10 kids who are, are older versus a program for a kid who's, you know, four, five, and six. So as we get more families involved in this program, I think we will go down in age and we will, um, you know, be able to specify our programming. So what are the hours? The regular hours of the camp are nine to four. The before care runs from 7.30 to nine and the aftercare goes from 4 to 5.30. Two. <laughs> okay. um, that's three, all right. <laughs> so uh, the cost? The cost is, it depends on whether you're a Groziel resident or, or not, and then it depends on if you are attending the three-day camp or the five-day camp. Just one second. Do we have any non-residents signed up for this yet? Yes, we do have non-residents coming. Um, a lot of the non-residents are people who do school of choice here. Um, I, I don't, I don't see why other people wouldn't once word gets out. Um, as a matter of fact, one family that we have, they've already uh, referred another family that lives by them, so they're coming now as well. But it started just um, the the out of district people were were our out-of-district school of choice kids. Was that all of them? Yeah, well, yeah, and it takes place at Centennial Farm and Water's Edge, so. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I am because I am a school employee. Every year I do that training. Um, and then we are also taking our counselors through that process online. There's training for CPR, um, first aid, and even bullying. So we are working to get all those trainings into place for all of our staff. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Thank you, Danielle. Yeah, thank thanks, you so guys. Much. It's been great. Oh, thank so you everybody's so much. been really accommodating too. I just want to say everybody's been fantastic to work with at both locations and everything we've done. Thank great you. community to work with. All right. Thank, thank you so much for everything. Thank you. That leads me to my report. I would just like to uh, remind everybody on social media when we're 
sh uh, sharing events. I usually tag all of you and stuff when it has to do with the recreation department, if you could just get the word out too. I wanna thank everyone, um, everybody up here and the people who did volunteer to help with Island Fest. It was a big success this year. I don't know if you guys caught my uh, presentation for the festival meeting two weeks ago, but we did pretty good. We did, uh, it was the least expensive to throw and it was an, it made the most revenue of anyone that I've been involved with. Carnival had a record year this year, thanks to Kevin and Giza with the bringing all those soccer players in. And uh, it was a good event. On to the director's report. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Quick. <laughs> I'm going quick. Um, I just, you know, Danielle's done a fantastic job. Um, I really, if we can spread the word about this camp, um, you know, like I said, we're, it, every week is very different that, you know, we'd li I'd like to see 40 to 50 kids in this camp. So that's the number we were aiming for. We're still a little low. So pass the word. Talk to your friends, families, Facebook, however we got to promote that. That'd be fantastic. Um, other things, um, I encourage all the commissioners um, to follow Grow Seal Recreation on Facebook. We are now up to 450 likes and followers, which is very good for a couple of months being up and running. Um, I communicate a lot on that Facebook. Um, and again, I am John Smith. If you see a John Smith post, that's me. So I'm not afraid to say who I am, but um, it was set up that way, and that's, we're just, I'm gonna say John. So, um, so residents, if you wanna follow what's happening with the rec department, that is the fastest, most accurate way to get updated information. So a um, couple of things going on. We have our first summer concert series tonight, Bugs Badeau at 7 p.m., Water's Edge and Smokey's Front Lawn. Um, so hopefully everybody will attend there. Um, also, we have some other camps that I'd like to talk about tonight. We have our Discovery Art Camp, our Experience Fine Art Camp, our Magic Camp. Um, so we have those starting up in July as well. So take a look at the brochure. It's page 20 if you would like your child to do just a specific camp. We've got the arts and the magic. And I guess the magic I heard is pretty cool. So swimming lessons are going fantastic. They are packed. Next session starts, I believe, next week. So if you'd like to register for swim lessons, and everything is online, grossillerecreation.com. Go right in, get your account set up, and you can and register for that. Also, we do offer private swim lessons. That's one-on-one. -on -one. We did it last summer. Um, if you can't make a group lesson in the morning, you can call the pool house, talk to Amber. She is our pool manager. You can do a one-on-one -on -one swimming lesson with one of the instructors out there. Um, Another special that's coming uh, starting July 1st, I have eight wells open at the marina. Anyone interested in a slip, 20% off your total fee for your summer slip. So if you know anyone that's looking for a slip, I will offer 20% discount. We do have eight slips open. When's that start? July 1st. July 1st. You know the so size on the slips? Um, I do. Oh, I don't, actually I don't, but I have the docs that are open. Um, I can get that, I can email that out. And I'll, if you have someone interested, they can just call Water's Edge or actually Greg, um, our doc master, to get those slips. But um, on Pier 1, Doc 16 and 12 are open. Um, Pier 3, Doc 5 and 9. Pier 4, Doc 7 and 8. And Pier 5, Doc 2 and 4. So actually that's 8. So 20% off. What would, uh, why do they go? There was a couple, we had three people that signed everything, felt this was the best location, um, and then ended up changing their mind. So it wasn't, you know, I thought, because I do talk, to, was it something that we did? or Okay. I mean, no, no, just different locations. Um, and I think last year we were down three slips, so, you know, it's kind of, the water's very high. That's another issue, especially on the our side. I think, I don't know if Albemarle's that way, but. High everywhere. Yeah, yeah, we're high. I mean, it's it's just, it's one of those battles that we're fighting right now. So, but I will do the 20% July 1st if you know anybody. Um, also, we have our golf programs going on. The kids are having a ball. Um, there's just so much. So, if you go online, the brochure's there. Um, 
and also I put a Facebook post um, asking our Facebook friends and residents if there's a program you would like to see this fall and winter chime in I'm listening um, lots of requests for evening aerobics we've had those in the past and we'll definitely bring those back but um, you know definitely comment on the Facebook I take those um, thoughts and see if we can put that together so and I think that is about it. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Any old business to be discussed? On to number eight. Any new business to be discussed other than what we get down here? Is there something? No. Dad, are you going to, at some point, can I talk about the millage? I have that down at number 13. But you could talk, yeah, when we get down there, yeah. All right. Um, Subcommittees. Oh, Mr. Nelson. There you go. Township board. <laughs> I memory is uh, not as sharp as it used to be, but I'm working on it. Uh, August 7th is the primary. Is it the first Tuesday in August or the second Tuesday? I think it's the first Tuesday in August. It's either the 7th or the 14th. I have it in front of me. Sorry. But it, it, is, the, it is the renewal, keyword renewal, of the rec millage, it's not an increase, it's a renewal of, of the rec millage. And so we'd like as many people to get out and vote as possibly can. In the past, it's always uh, passed with a lot of yes votes, and we appreciate that. And uh, we're going to just make it bigger and better. Thank you. Jim? I just want to add to that, I'm not sure what the amount is that goes on your property value. But there is no increase on it, right? It is right. the same as it was before. The rec millage is so important. I know you people get worked up about the roads, and we're always there for our safety and our and our fire guys, right, Rich? And we just need to make sure. One of the top things people ask when they come to a community is what kind of programs do you offer? What is your recreation? What are your amenities? We live on an island here. We have pools and golf courses and uh, marinas and sports fields and farms and parks. It's it's just a great thing to do. So I hope everybody does voice and get this millage through. Thank you. Open space, Mr. Kaya. Uh, I just spoke with Clifford St. Pierre, uh, chairman of the Open Space Committee, and the two things he wanted to make sure to communicate were that uh, maintenance is going on on all the trails. I think they'd appreciate any help or volunteer uh, stuff with that if anyone's willing. Um, and they just commis they just approved a new commissioner, John Mayer, I believe his name is. Um, open space won't be meeting in July and August, but they'll be meeting again in September, first Tuesdays of the month. Thank you. Kind of threw me off that he had something so quick to do with that. I'm like, wow. <laughs> right, um, uh, Kim Waters Edge Playscape Sunrise Park, Ms. O'Farrell. Yeah, everything's up and running. Um, you know, Playscape. Um, there is um, a, a small program. It was asked um, for me to put in the brochure, which I did, um, by one of our residents. We do have Playscape play dates. That's at the Playscape um, from 11 to 1, Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's open play. So it's advertised in the brochure. Um, you know, as far as what does rec, you know, this is just to say, hey, if you're home and you want to meet some other mommies and daddies, meet at the Playscape. So. And again, that's on page 18 um, of the Profile Magazine. Sunrise Park, um, we're keeping that spotless. Um, you know, it looks beautiful. Uh, and the porta potty is installed, and you see the fence. So we now have a restroom at the top. Um, I've ordered some restroom signs because people are going, where's the bathroom? They can't find I've had a couple of calls, they can't find it. So it's right on East River Road behind that fence so we're happy that's there so and so now there's a restroom there that's all thank you uh, me cultural and special events uh, as Kim had mentioned earlier uh, tonight kicks off our Thursday night Riverfront concert series at Water's Edge these are free events come on down they happen rain or shine they run through the end of August in conjunction with Smokies <laughs> I already thanked the Island Fest then people uh, Macomb Street I know um, Dr. Woodward's not here, but Angela had mentioned that they're doing some um, movies up there on 
like Fridays during the summer are called Flicks on Macomb or something like that. So I know they rescheduled the next one to July 11th, I think. Yeah, yeah, July 11th. Yeah. <laughs> Goonies. And uh, don't forget Sundays at the Macomb Commons from 7 to 8 are the concerts on the Commons. That is sponsored by the Art Alliance and the DVA and the Richard Roslin Meyer Foundation. And I didn't have any of that written down. I'm just acting like I'm reading it. And uh, <laughs> um, I will uh, give more info about the Halloween party when we get down there to that discussion. Mr. Antosh, budget and finances and grants. You guys are ready for some numbers? Oh, my. <laughs> budget and finance and grants. Oh, I apologize, Madam Secretary. I printed this off for you so you don't have to write the numbers down. Oh, that's you oh, right. that did all that? Uh, revenue and expense report. So total revenues, uh, year to date, we're at 252000 uh, versus a 2018 budget of um, nearly $1 million, um, the budgets for the full year. So total revenue for the month of June was 84000 Total expenses were at 273,000 year to date versus a budget of 998,000. Total expense for the month of June was 89,764. Uh, net revenue and expense, um, it's, we're, we're 20K over on the expense side and month to date were over 5.3K. So revenues were driven by golf. Um, golf, marina, pool, festival, uh, general, which is lease income and the recreation department um, budget. So golf was 49K for the year and 17.3K for the month. Uh, the marina was 73K for the year and 4.5K for the month. The pool was 14K for the year and 12K for the month. So some seasonality there. And the festival was uh, nearly 80K for the year and 38.5K for the month. And that's more than budget for the year, so we're doing great there. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> uh, general lease income 15.6k year to date, 7.8k month to date, and recreation department 20.1k year to date, 4.1k month to date. Um, expenses were driven by uh, grounds and maintenance 21k for the year, 11.8k uh, for the month. Golf expenses 63k for the year, 23k for the month. In the marina. Uh, 15k for the year, 14k or 4k for the month. Pool 7.5k for the year, 4.6k for the month. And rec, rec department 105k for the year and 49k for the month. And festival expenses were 61k for the year. And uh, there was a slight credit uh, for June. Um, ended up being a 3.8k credit. Uh, key points. So you know. Grozeal Recreation is nearly fully uh, supported by the Recreation Village, as we just said, um, and that amount is 523k. That's what we have in the budget for this year. Um, it's up for renewal, um, as Mr. Nelson um, let us know. So, without your support, we'll no longer be able to provide the programs and events in our community. You know, um, like we said, it's not an increase um, on your taxes. Um, at Commerce Park, uh, Gira and Giza. Uh, they use recreation-owned land that recreation does not charge these organizations for. Uh, that keeps costs down, costs down for the, those sports organizations. So it's something important we like to provide. Um, and we're also reviewing ways to increase revenues by cost activity, um, at least to balance the budget and find ways to generate more income uh, to offset growing expenses. And as far as grants go, um, Kim, did you have some information on a grants it's further down on the agenda isn't that the uh yeah that yeah it's at the bottom yeah that's okay an on page yep. two that's all i have thank you oh, i have some questions real quick what so obviously we're running here if we're only, if we're spending a close to a million a year and we only get 523 right from the millage Correct. so we need to come up with other ideas to make some revenue too which i'm trying to do my part as small as it may be to try to get those numbers like festival were five years ago to get hopefully get wrecked with Kim and you guys in the next two to three years three years to be in the black you know because these millages I hate to think that we have to cut, start cutting stuff you know ah but 
Thank you for this presentation. But I have one thing. See how you have the revenues listed and then the expenses? Yes. Do you think next time they can be in the same order? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and our budget, our fiscal cycle is April 1st through April 1st as okay. well. Okay. Oh, all right. Just so you know, that's just another thing. So It's, it's how they're listed on the P&L, Chad, in order on the P&L. Oh, well. and all, all, the, all the documentation that's in front of you, um, I run those reports right from the finance department. Um, I can run them out of my office. If anyone has a question, you want to see them. Obviously, Brandon and I met before the meeting. Um, so they're all right there. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Chad. Yes, sir. Festival, $61,000. That's about what it costs to throw it. However, we made $15,000. So if you read this without not knowing that, you would say, oh, my gosh, it looks like it cost us that amount of money. It did, but we also made $15,000. So that's, is that in the, in the revenue side? That's on the revenue side of the report. Okay, correct, yeah. That's yeah, in there. Okay. Plus, we came in like 4000 under the projected budget expenses that we had. And also understand outdoor activities have been curtailed by the weather. And right, yeah. Every time, oh, believe me, I, two or three be years down. ago Pools when it rained, I didn't think twice about it. Now I think golf course, swimming pool. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Only anybody panic. <laughs> All right. Dr. Woodward is not here for the farms. She's kind of doing the DD, uh, the, uh, the home of Comb Street, too, which I like that. Yep. I like the, that information coming here. Thank you. Recreation land, Mr. Mary and Mr. Brower. Kim, I know you uh, talked about it briefly before, but can you go over what's going on with the construction and the field expansion over there for everybody? Sure. Um, working with the township manager and people can see the, the fill is still, we're still going around. Okay. It's, so that project is not done. Um, and we're going to continue to work with the township to keep that process going because the more we clear back there, the more land that we have whether we're using it for soccer, football, baseball, playground. I'm, like I said, I'm getting this grant for $50,000 for next year. Um, I plan to put a playground in there. I'm also looking at a skate park. There are grants for skate parks. Um, so in essence, I know there was this original master plan that was designed, I think, in 2011, I think. Um, so when you have an opportunity that comes at you to clear land without any cost to the rec department, you got to take it because it's, it costs a lot of money to clear land, the trees and, and all the stuff back there. Um, so in essence, what I'm trying, I've been here a year and, um, I want to redevelop that land, the whole piece, not just soccer, football, baseball but other amenities that we can use for our community as well. So, you know, that's what I want to, we have a new commission. I don't want to say we're starting over, but we got to put a plan together with the additional land as well. And I've sa said that to uh, uh, Mike Cornell and, and Greg, you know, I definitely support the ball diamonds, but I, I don't want to start a project right off the cuff until all that stuff is done. And I would like to do it right and especially when you get grant dollars, who, something else may come up the pipeline. Um, and I've been looking at skate parks. You know, you can get grants for those. I'm going to work with Brandon on that. And really turn that rec land that is our land into a really cool place for all these kids. So that, that is the master plan moving forward. I think a skate park is a great idea. I, I just, you know, you look everywhere. It's a half pipe here. I yeah, mean, I mean. It. I don't know what our liability is going to be, but. <laughs> and grant, those types of things, they, you know, this isn't a one, two, three. You know, this is a, you know, maybe a, a two to three year plan out there. So it's this isn't a rush job. And I, I want to work with the, the whole new commission to plan that area, our land, properly. So Couple that's where we're at. couple questions about the land. Um, the filling they're doing, uh, two things. What, when are they going to be done with the West River project, you know, done bringing all that soil in? Is there a, sp is there a. I have not received a timeline from Dale, okay. Mr. Ram, the township um, manager. Do you uh, have anything? It's 
somewhat tentative depending, you know, they've been able to progress very rapidly. We haven't had any issues with, with the project. Uh, you know, they are taking some of that fill out of there and bringing it over and dumping it over here in the in place it was, was created. And the good news about that is, first of all, it fills it in over there, but secondly, it doesn't have to be hauled off the island, which is saving us money on the road project. I'm just curious for the sake of uh, settling, you know, because soil has to settle. Right. Um, but the, the second part of the question relates to the settling. I noticed, I, I've been looking around back there, and uh, I've actually had uh, people, citizens, raise concerns to me about what's going on over there. Uh, in regards to uh, the quality of the fill, uh, you know, boulders and asphalt and stuff mixed in with it. Um, and I've noticed that they've uh, just cut the trees down, left the stumps in the ground, and filled over them. As those deteriorate, that's going to settle those areas. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm not complaining. I'm just curious about, you know, what they. Uh, I'll talk to Dale about that because he's the point person on that. Uh, oh, at the end of the day, we're doing the right thing. We, we're not, oh, we're absolutely. We're not I, do, I couldn't agree more. We're not going to do it half wrong and half right. Uh, if I have to be over there 24-7 sitting in a chair watching, I'll do that because it's, it's too valuable a piece of land <laughs> and we struggle for parcels to have all the wreck that we have and so it's a great chance to do it right and add new acreage so well I, I i get rich's concern because i get phone calls and texts and emails and everybody's like oh chad this and that and i'm like well um i just so i get it you know we have b pack asking questions all oh, our bike paths you know this and that and stuff like that and i don't i think it's a good thing but that being said some of us get bombarded with a lot of questions of what's Oh, that bulldozer's over there. What are they doing? So, but now you know it's us doing it. So everybody out there, it's this group right here. <laughs> I'll talk. Yeah, I'll talk to the township manager um, and see if he can get a statement to the public or GI Connect or something with with that. Those questions. I actually saw the township manager in a pair of Kim's boots walking around over there. So just so you know, he's involved over there. Wow. <laughs> Those are the same boots when she shoveled off the ice rink, by the way. <laughs> Looks like tomorrow. That's for the same size. <laughs> That's dedication that she lends him her boots. Here you go. Um, all right. Anything else with that? I'm good. You? I'm good. All right, Kevin, you got something for the recreation programs, Mr. Niso. Nothing more than I've heard nothing but good things about the programs that have already taken place that are going on. I talked to John Evans, who ran the soccer camp. Um, everybody loved it. Great job. You know, Monday night's the Cornhole League. I wasn't there this past Monday, but I'll be there this coming Monday. Um, hopefully it's a huge success and, you know, just keep support the programs. It was a lot of fun. I, I was there for a little bit. For Monday. Yeah. I got to drive by. So Those people, people are fun. serious. I never knew they took that Cornhole yeah. thing so serious. Oh, Expect my goodness. Expect everybody there Monday night. I have a whole crew coming. <laughs> for so sure. Be there. Yeah. Plus, you're allowed to have your beverages out there. Well, am I allowed to say that on camera? No. <laughs> oh, all right. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> um, all right. Thanks, Kevin. Um, Ethel is not here. Any update on the seniors? I know you had sent us an email. Yeah. Um, the Senior Olympics, is, well, the last day to register for the Senior Olympics is tomorrow. So if you are going to get involved with ping pong, golf, I mean, the, the menu is huge. Um, stop by Water's Edge. We have the forms there. I think we have a lot more seniors on our team this year. So I'll be heading over to Flat Rock next week, dropping those registrations off. We are the host of Ping Pong this year. We're the Ping Pong host. So we will have lots of seniors from other communities coming to our island out at the farm for Ping Pong. And you know we have a p very, very avid group of Ping Pongers on this island. They um, the might be better to change the name to table tennis. That's what it really is. Table tennis. Um, there's open table tennis at the farm Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 4 to 6. No fee. Um, it's just a, a, a group of people that got together and away they go. So um, some other things that I'm working on for our senior citizens, I am looking to do in the fall and winter 
um, possibly two lunches per month. Um, our, we've got a lot of seniors on the island, and um, we need to get them more involved with some things. I'm working on some bus trips with uh, Rotary. I have talked to some Rotary friends, and we're going to team up and do some bus trips for the island and our seniors and whoever. And again, um, I'm looking to do a senior ball in the winter, kind of a formal ball. Um, <laughs> so, you know, seniors, come talk to me. What other things can we help you with, offer you? We have Meals on Wheels. We have transportation. I get calls, where's the bus? Where's the other, that new bus that uh, Ms. Boyd ordered? Um, no word on the bus. I call, I email, I can't make this new bus get here any faster because it's just the way it goes. Some of these grants and so forth take up to two to three years. Once I have the bus, everybody will know. So this is a bigger bus, it's a 15 passenger. So um, I can only make them go so fast. But so that that's kind of where we're at. Some How, uh, oh, um, are we allowed to do casino runs with those seniors or no? Because I know a lot of them would probably be hip to going down to those casinos in the city. Oh, on a trip? Yeah. Oh, yeah. On a day trip? Yeah, the day trips, um, you know, it, it's really up to where we want to. T that's why I need some feedback from our seniors. Where would you like to go? Rotary is putting together their list, and again, we're teaming up with them because we want to offer that to all residents, not just our seniors because it's, it's a big charter bus, and we got to fill that bus to get people where they have to go. So I will have that list in the next brochure of those trips that anyone can go on as well. Take a look at the uh, Toledo Mudheads. My mom lives in Trenton Towers, and they go down to the Mudheads game twice a month. Okay. They get about 60 or 70 people that pack on that bus. Mud hens or heads? Hens. I think it ends up being like $5 a ticket or something like that for the game. The baseball team or something? Mm -hmm. Baseball? Band, the Mud Heads. The mud Heads. <laughs> From the 80s. <laughs> I might suggest is there a place where students can walk indoors? Yeah, we have the walking club in the morning. That's in the brochure as well. We have the morning walking club at the farm, and they walk inside. I think it's at 6.30 in the morning at the farm. We have an instructor and everything. Yep. I'll have to double check the time. I know Kim has mentioned the brochure, and just so you guys know, we're working on the fall winter guide for the uh, profile, Grozel Profile Magazine. So Christmas, Thanksgiving, all that stuff, right? We are planning to have the fall festival. Um, we're picking our dates right now. Yeah. Um, Winter Fest, Chad, and I'm going to leave that up to festival. If we're going to try that one more time. Um, we're going to have the breakfast, breakfast with Santa, those types of events. So if there's, if there's another event that commission would like to see, I'll reach out to festival as well. Obviously, Paint the Town Red is homecoming weekend, so that will definitely be in play as well. And this is coming out at the end of August, I believe. We're going to have it in the homes the last week of August, and it will cover September through January. Yep. Okay. Uh, Wendy Kearney, your school report should be short because they're closed, right? No, <laughs> school is out. <laughs> um, so, no, I just wanted to thank Builders Club again, and we, we did it um, for Festivals Commission, but they, they really stepped up and came out and helped us set up. and clean up and we really really appreciate it so we tried to have a volunteer pool party but it decided to rain on us last night so we will be postponing that and picking a new date but um no other than that there's there's really nothing because school's out um there's a new principal coming on for park lane so once we know who that person is i'll be uh working with them of course so. and i also want to uh shout out to the schools and thank them um very much we use the schools for basketball camp for the soccer camp has to go inside, you know, everything, you know, the schools, are, thank you. That's all I want to say because we do not have a rec center. So when we need indoor space, the schools are there for us. So pass that along. Yep. And what's the deadline? Because I know we had um, like a couple of the teachers were teaching stuff after school. So what's the deadline for them to submit anything for the September, January? Oh, the deadline. Um, oh, I had that date picked. I think it's the se second week of July. We would like things to be coming at us. Okay. Latest third week of July. I know, like Mr. Soltes yeah. had done some things, and he's was yeah. at least he had mentioned he was interested in doing some some things again for this year. So. 
which the parents loved, by the way. Those at right after school things were wonderful. So and that's it. I don't have anything. Thank you. All right, action items. Kim, you want to read this to us, the request for the CRC? Yeah, requesting from the CRC to go out for bid for an ADA playground equipment upgrade to Centennial Farm not to exceed $12,766.30. These dollars are from the Community Development, Development Block Grant 2018. I have provided you the information from the block grant. The dollar amount that's been allocated to us is $12,766.30. Um, again, the, this is free money. It's grant money. The piece that I'm looking at, you see a picture of it on page three. It is the um, the Omni Spinner. <laughs> oh, it's like a merry-go-round. Have a speed limit on that chair. Oh wow. <laughs> There's a picture of it. Um, it is handicap accessible. It's kind of a merry-go-round piece. Um, I did have a playground company come out, walk the grounds with me. Um, and this is the piece that does fit into the budget. Playground equipment is very, very expensive. Yeah, I see. It's off the charts. Yeah. So even when you get a $50,000 grant, we're going to have to add on to that. You can't, you know, the big daddies are close to $200,000 for a nice playground. So where's that going now? Okay, so map. On your last page of the document, it's not a really good picture, but the existing it's kind of in front of the existing playground. Can you see that? So it's gonna it it's kind of in front of the playground facing the rec building. It will fit there. Um, it's a great piece to have out there. We don't have anything that spins, and kids love things that spins. Um, and again, with the grant dollars, it has to be ADA compliant. I can't just go out and buy some swinging sets. It has to be something um, for our users that's within um, ADA compliance. So, and also we have to go out for bid for this. This is um, over $5,000. Um, and with block grant money, anything over 10000 does have to be bidded out. So I'm requesting to go out for bid. I will probably put that bid together with sometime in August. Um, and this may be a late fall project, if not early spring project. So oh. do one of them need to put the motion out there? How big is it, like dimensions? Um, the spec, I think I have a spec. I mean, the only, the only reason I say something, because I look at the last place for the proposal, mm. and they want $1,000 in freight. To bring it here, go get it. Go get it. <laughs> that's why I'm asking how big it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I will pick it up. I don't want to save you guys a thousand dollars. I mean, that, that's a lot of money. It is. I mean, but it's again, four. It's four hundred ninety-nine pounds. That's a quote from one company. Oh no, I get yeah, it. Yeah, when we go out for bid, other companies can bid on this piece. Sure. Right, but yeah. But I mean, Brighton's only an hour and twenty minutes right. from here. Our drivers from my company are out there all the time. Depending on how big it is, I'll just throw it in the truck and bring it back here for you. I mean, and I can get this, I can pull the specs yeah. up online, but it, it's actually pretty big. For future big. reference. That, that's, you know, that's I think all. six kids can fit on that thing, and, and most ADA pieces of equipment, they're extremely heavy, uh, plus the parts, the install. I'm, I'm going to have it professionally installed just for the safety factors. I know um, we thought about use, you know having the community install it, but when it comes to a playground piece and the uh, – ADA stuff, I, I'm just going to use the grant dollars to have it done correctly. So there's multiple companies that sell this pi this piece of equipment, and we put a bid out when we get the grant to see which one matches it. Okay. Or like we get the we best bid, deal. When we bid the um, ADA doors, right. that was grant dollars for the farm. Now the, the doors on the farm are handicap accessible. We never had that. So I went out for bid, worked with the engineers. They put the specs together. Um, and the township does bidding all the time, so, and that's just proper procedure for these dollars amounts, so. Can I put the motion, or did one of them have to put the motion for the $12,000? Wendy? 
Okay. Up there for the motion for I'm trying to find the amount it was twelve thousand twelve thousand seven hundred and sixty six dollars and thirty cents. To not yeah, to not to I enthusiastically second the motion. It's great to get grand dollars for the community. I'll second it. Any more discussion about this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Second action item. Actually, what? Do you got something? Well, the second action item. Halloween. Um, I'm requesting approval from the CRC to establish and approve the budget for the Haunted Hangar event, which will be held October 27th in the amount of $5,000. Time to be determined on this event. All revenues from this event will go towards the community rank debt. The current debt right now, I believe, is 39000 and some change. So, um, Chad, if you'd like to talk a little bit about the event, just we're, we're in the planning stages of right. it so so we have a couple uh, commissions we have to go through airport commerce to make sure they're comfortable with letting us use the hangar we will uh, uh, like Kim said we're in the planning stages we're thinking 30 bucks a ticket 50 a couple it will be Saturday the 27th from uh, starting at 9 p.m. cash bar all the proceeds will go towards the rink debt I don't think 5,000 is a lot to approve for this you know to get this thing going it's for one night I'd like to shoot for a good amount of people in there uh, and uh, if you all know and I, I want the festival commission because they're feeling a little left out they think they all they get is island fest and they want to be able to do other things but to do other things we have to have a budget to work with you know people say oh can you do this and can you do that and it's like well can you buy a ticket or can you volunteer your time or you know so we, we I'd like to get out of this dot and I think by throwing a, a cool Halloween party might be a way to get started on that so if you all have questions, I know Kyle is going to refrain from the vote because of possible conflicts with something, but it's going to be good. So, any questions about this? It will be a 20, 21 and over event. I've got a lot of people, uh, you know, in the talks about this. So, if we get the green light and we have this budget approved, we can move have ahead. Have we done these in the past? You have. <laughs> well, you have. Rick has not. Uh, yeah, Rick has not. This is just. What kind of revenue do we typically see out of a, an event like that? Well, we have to pay to rent the hangar, first of all. No, no, revenue. How, wh revenue. What do you, what right, do you make right. Uh, but I'm trying to think of a. I'm, I mean, we could make everything from $1,000 to $10,000. I don't know. It's just. But there's typically a profit? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Five thousand would just be for like printing tickets, buying the booze. Right, that's just in general. Day. Right. Okay. 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 Got to have some start. We got to have some. Yeah. yeah. Well, my special event line, I did increase it. I think, and you have the financials. I put in twenty thousand this year. Um, that's just so we can physically say, well, we have five thousand to start this event off. So the money is there in the budget. Um, and I'd like to see what, you know, since festival did make some working capital of 15000 but that is used usually to start booking bands for next year, et cetera, et cetera. But it's also there so we have a little bit of play money so we can go in doing something like this because we need to get the department in the black with the ice rink especially. I would like to add that we are budgeted to pay down 5000 of the rink debt this mm -hmm. year, and that money has to come from somewhere. That's correct. So if we can make 5000 on this... There's That's the goal. I'll make a motion that we approve this. So. I'll second it. I've already had people calling me for tickets, so <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> Any more discussion about this? All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. And do you have discussion items? Houston Commission. What? Houston Bahar. Oh, <laughs> you are. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Extended public comment? Woody Clark? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Greg, you got anything else you want to bring up here? No, nothing at this time. Rich Brower? No, sir. Kevin Naso? Nope. Wendy Kearney? Nope. Brandon Antosh? No, sir. Kyle DeBasai? Nope. Am I good? Are you two got anything? I you just want to talk about the July meeting. Um, will we have any conflicts for the J July meeting at 6 o'clock? Just July trying to 26. get ahead of the game. Vacations and so forth. So we're looking at the date of July 26th. 
July 26th. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we will have our next <laughs> meeting. You'll still use your yard, right? Well, with Grozeal, you're gone. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. Okay, the next CRC mi meeting will be at 6 p.m. on July 26th, and we move those to 6 because we are all on our way to the first summer concert at Water's Edge. Which starts in five minutes, so if there's no more comments, we will just uh, adjourn this meeting at 7 p.m. Hey, um, Chad, I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. I, I, I apologize for interrupting. I, I made a promise to somebody I'd make an announcement. There's a fundraiser for uh, down on Albemarle. Oh, that, for yeah, for a young girl that's going through some tough times. So if anybody wants to go down there after they go and listen to the band, I think they're going to be there until 9, 10 o'clock. Even so. if you don't go, make a donation. Yes, yes. So sorry to interrupt. But no, that's good. Perfect. Small town, we gotta take care of each other. Yes, we do. Are we good? All right, 654. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Next meeting is July 26th. I wanna thank everybody. Support your recreation. Let's get that millage. Talk about the millage. I move we close this, adjourn this meeting. Favor? Aye. 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 Aye